Joseph Robert Theismann is an American former professional gridiron football player, sports commentator, corporate speaker and restaurateur. He rose to fame playing quarterback in the National Football League and Canadian Football League. Theismann spent 12 seasons with the Washington Redskins, where he was a two-time pro bowler and helped the team to consecutive Super Bowl appearances, winning Super Bowl 17 over the Miami Dolphins and losing Super Bowl 18. He was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 2003. Following his retirement from football in 1985 after a career-ending injury to his right leg, Theismann worked as a sportscaster and an analyst on pro football broadcasts with ESPN for nearly 20 years. He primarily partnered with Mike Patrick, for the network's Sunday Night Football package and for one season of Monday Night Football with Mike Tirico and Tony Kornheiser. Theismann also worked as a color analyst on NFL Network's Thursday Night Football package with play-by-play -play voice Bob Papa and Matt Millen. Theismann also co-hosts the network's weekly show Playbook. Since 2011, he has worked on the Washington football team preseason television broadcast team. Additionally, he works on the NFL Network on a variety of programs primarily as an analyst, Dot Theismann is the owner of Theismann's Restaurant and Bar in Alexandria, Virginia, founded in 1975. He also performs as a speaker for corporate events, speaking on topics such as leadership and self-motivation. Chapter 1 – Early Life Theismann was born to Austrian Joseph John Theismann who ran a gas station and worked in his brother's liquor store. His Hungarian mother, Olga Tobias, worked for Johnson and Johnson until her retirement. Theismann was raised in South River, New Jersey, and attended South River High School, where he lettered in baseball, basketball, and football. He was a high school teammate of Drew Pearson. Theismann accepted a college football scholarship to attend the University of Notre Dame, where he lived in Zam House. Chapter 2 – College Career At Notre Dame, Theismann became the starting quarterback in his sophomore year, after Terry Hanratty was injured late in the season. In the three remaining games in the regular season, he led the Irish to two wins and a tie. In 1969, Theismann led the Irish to a number five ranking, but lost to the University of Texas in the 1970 Cotton Bowl Classic, 21-17. The next year, the Irish had a 10-1 record, a number two ranking, and won against Texas in the 1971 Cotton Bowl Classic, 24 11. That year, Theismann was an All American and an academic All American, and was in contention for the Heisman Trophy. Theismann, whose last name was actually pronounced Theismann, recounted in 2007 that it was Notre Dame publicity man Roger Valdizeri, who insisted that he change the pronunciation of his name to rhyme with Heisman but he finished second to Jim Plunkett of Stanford University. Theismann set school records for passing yards in a season and touchdowns in a season. He also set a school record for passing yards in a game and completions in a game while playing against the University of Southern California in a torrential downpour in 1970, which they lost 38-28. As a starting quarterback, Theismann compiled a 23-2 record while throwing for 4,411 yards and 31 touchdowns. His 4,411 passing yards rank fifth on Notre Dame's career passing list. Theismann was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 2003. He was the eighth Notre Dame quarterback enshrined into the hall, joining former Heisman Trophy winners Angelo Batelli, John Lujak and Paul Hornung. Chapter 3 – Professional Career Chapter 3 – Section 1 – Canadian Football League Theismann was selected 99th overall in the fourth round of the 1971 NFL Draft by the Miami Dolphins and in the 39th round of the 1971 Major League Baseball Draft by the Minnesota Twins. After prolonged negotiations with the Dolphins failed, Theismann elected to sign with the Toronto Argonauts of the Canadian Football League for $50,000 per season. In his rookie year, Theismann quarterbacked the Argonauts to a 10 4 record, led the league's Eastern Conference in passing statistics, and won a berth in the Grey Cup game in Vancouver, 
British Columbia vs. the Calgary Stampeders. A fumble late in the fourth quarter by Argonaut running back Leon McKee close to the goal line cost the Argonauts what would have been their first Grey Cup victory since 1952. In 1971, Theismann completed 148 of 278 passes for 2,440 yards and 17 touchdowns. His 1972 season was shortened by injury, but he hit 77 of 127 passes for 1,157 yards and 10 touchdowns. During his last CFL season, 1973, 157 of his 274 passes were complete, for 2,496 yards and both 13 touchdowns and interceptions. He was an all-star in both 1971 and 1973. Chapter 3 Section 2, National Football League In 1974, the Washington Redskins obtained Thiesman's rights from the Dolphins in exchange for the team's first-round draft pick in 1976. Thiesman left the CFL and joined the Redskins, where he served as the team's punt returner during his first season. In 1978, Thiesman became the Redskins' starting quarterback, succeeding Billy Kilmer. In 1982, Theismann led the Redskins to their first championship in 40 years against the Dolphins in Super Bowl 17. He threw two touchdowns and, with the Redskins trailing 17-13 in the third quarter, made arguably the most important defensive play of the game, after his pass was deflected by Dolphins lineman Kimber Camper, causing what appeared to be an interception and short sure touchdown, Theismann himself was able to knock the ball out of Bocamper's hands, keeping the score close enough for Washington to stick to the run-heavy strategy that would eventually lead to victory. He also led the team to an appearance in Super Bowl XVIII the following year, and would go on to set several Redskins franchise records, including most career passing attempts, most career passing completions and most career passing yards, while also throwing 160 touchdown passes, with 138 interceptions. On the ground, he rushed for 1,815 yards and 17 touchdowns. He was named NFL MVP in 1983 by four organizations. He earned the Player of the Game award in the second of his two Pro Bowl appearances. Theismann also punted once in his career, for one yard against the Chicago Bears. In an era when most quarterbacks had long since used variations of a double-bar face mask that afforded more protection, Theismann refused to use anything but a one-bar face mask throughout his career. However, on at least one occasion, Theismann wore a helmet with a more standard face mask. Substituting for an ineffective Billy Kilmer against the Dallas Cowboys on October 16, 1977, Theismann entered the game wearing a face mask similar to the style worn by Kenny Stabler at the time. Chapter 3 Section 2 Subsection 2 Career Ending Injury On November 18, 1985, Theismann suffered a comminuted compound fracture of the tibia and fibula in his right leg during a sack by linebackers Lawrence Taylor and Harry Carson during a Monday night football game against the New York Giants telecast by ABC from RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C. The injury was later voted the NFL's most shocking moment in history by viewers in an ESPN poll, and the tackle was ultimately dubbed the hit that no one who saw it can ever forget by the Washington Post. The game's score was 7-7 in the second quarter when the Redskins attempted to run a flea flicker play, Theismann had handed off to fullback John Riggins, who subsequently lateraled the ball back to the quarterback. The Giants' defense, however, was tightly focused, and they tried to blitz Theismann. As Taylor pulled Theismann down, Taylor's knee came down and drove straight into Thiesman's lower right leg, fracturing both the tibia, and the fibula as Giants linebackers Gary Reasons and Harry Carson also joined Taylor in the sack. The pain was unbelievable, but it didn't last more than a second or two. My leg snapped like a breadstick. I heard it clearly, it sounded like two muzzled gunshots over my left shoulder. Pow, pow, it was at that point, I also found out what a magnificent machine the human body is. Almost immediately, from the knee down, all the feeling was gone in my right leg. The endorphins had kicked in, and I was not in any great pain. 
As Theismann was down, Taylor waved for emergency medical technicians. Initially, many Redskins personnel thought that Taylor's calling and pointing directed at their sideline was him taunting over the fact that he had successfully stopped their play, and it was a few moments later that they realized Theismann was seriously injured. The Monday Night Football announcer team of Frank Gifford, O. J. Simpson and Joe Namath had correctly inferred from the start that Taylor was calling for help. While initially only the players on the field could see the extent of the damage to Thiesman's leg, the reverse angle instant replay provided a clearer view of what had actually happened. Thiesman's lower leg bones were broken midway between his knee and his ankle, such that his leg from his foot to his mid shin was lying flat against the ground while the upper part of his shin up to his knee was at a 45-degree angle to the lower part of his leg. ABC's decision to screen the reverse angle instant replay several times despite its palpably graphic content shocked millions of viewers, although as the replays were shown, Gifford repeatedly urged viewers at home to exercise discretion. The repeated screening of this replay remains to this day one of the most controversial in-game television production decisions in NFL history. The compound fracture of the tibia, and fibula led to insufficient bone growth during Thiesman's recovery, leaving his right leg shorter than his left. As a result, the injury ended Thiesman's career, forcing him to retire at the age of 36. Thiesman never blamed Taylor for his injury, while Taylor has apologized to Thiesman many times, the quarterback has reiterated that Taylor was merely doing his job. Thiesman's injury was highlighted in the film The Blind Side as the reason that, after the quarterback, one of the highest paid football players is the left tackle, who protects a right handed quarterback's blind side. The same injury occurred exactly 33 years later to another Redskins quarterback, Alex Smith, on November 18, 2018, in a game against the Houston Texans when cornerback Kareem Jackson and defensive end JJ Watt sacked Smith, a game that Theismann himself was attending. However, unlike Theismann, Smith managed to play an additional season two years later, making his season debut against the Los Angeles Rams and retiring at the end of the season after he was released from the team a month prior. Chapter 4, Career Statistics Chapter 4 Section 1, CFL Statistics Chapter 4 Section 2, NFL Statistics Chapter 4 Section 3 Washington football team franchise records. Most career wins by a quarterback. Most career passing yards. Most career passing completions. Most career passing attempts. Chapter 5, Broadcast and Acting Career. In 1985, Theismann helped call Super Bowl XIX for ABC alongside Frank Gifford and Don Meredith, becoming only the second player to do commentary on a Super Bowl telecast while still an active player at the time. Theismann served as a color commentator on regional CBS NFL coverage in 1986 and 1987, then worked on ESPN's Sunday Night Football telecasts from 1988 to 2005, and on their Monday Night Football coverage in 2006. In addition to covering football, Theismann hosted the first half of the first season of American Gladiators in 1989. On March 26, 2007, ESPN announced that Ron Yavorsky would replace Theismann in the Monday Night Football booth. Theismann rejected an offer to work on the network's college football coverage. He has since done a number of Washington Redskins preseason games on CSN. On September 16, 2009, the NFL Network announced that Theismann would analyze game films on the show Playbook, airing Thursday and Friday nights at 6 p.m. Eastern. On January 9, 2010, Theismann and his former head coach Joe Gibbs served as color commentators, along with play-by-play -play man Tom Hammond, for the Saturday AFC Wild Card game, between the New York Jets and the Cincinnati Bengals. On September 6, 2010, NFL Network announced that they had added Theismann to their Thursday night football broadcast crew alongside Bob Papa and Matt Millen. The grouping lasted one season. He also co-hosted NFL games on NBC in 2010, and co-hosted NFL Network's No Huddle in 2011. Chapter 5 Section 1, 
acting appearances. Feisman has occasionally acted, although most appearances are as himself or as himself in a fictional context. He does have several TV and movie appearances, including The BJ and the Bear, Cannonball Run 2, and The Man from Left Field. Feisman appeared as himself, as part of a buyer group for the fictional New York Hawks football team on the TV series Necessary Roughness, and on the post-Super Bowl episode Operation, Broken Feather of Brooklyn Nine-Nine. His most recent acting appearances were in movies for the Hallmark Channel. In 2016's Love on the Sidelines, he appeared as the father of an injured professional football player. In 2019's Snow Coming, he played an agent for professional athletes. Feisman has acted as a national spokesman for several companies including Colonial Penlife Insurance Company and for Super Beta Prostate. Chapter 6 Personal Life Feisman fathered three children, Joseph Jr., Amy, and Patrick, with his first wife, the former Shari Brown. Soon after Thiesman's injury, the couple divorced, after which Theismann began a seven-year relationship, including a brief engagement, with television personality Kathy Lee Crosby. Early in 1991, Crosby sued for $4.5 million, touching off a countersuit. The suits were settled several months later. His second marriage, to former Miss Connecticut winner and Miss America contestant Jean Caruso, ended in divorce after three years in 1995. Feisman was ordered to pay nearly $1 million of marital property and $3,500 a month in alimony. Theisman is currently married to the former Robin Smith, self described as a country girl from Memphis. They have homes in Virginia, Tennessee, and the Florida Panhandle. Chapter 7 Awards Feisman received the Golden Plate Award of the American Academy of Achievement presented by Awards Council member Tom Landry in 1983. Theisman was inducted into the New Jersey State Interscholastic Athletic Association Hall of Fame in 1997. In 2011, Theisman was inducted into the New Jersey Hall of Fame. On September 5, 2014, Theisman was honored by the Ride of Fame as they christened a double-decker sightseeing bus in Washington, D.C. dedicated to him and his achievements. Chapter 8, UFL On August 19, 2010, head coach Jay Gruden of the UFL's Florida Tuskers confirmed that Theisman introduced himself to the Tuskers as the team's new part owner. Theisman expressed disappointment at the way he was treated during his time in the league and left the team when it was folded into the Virginia Destroyers in January 2011.